Hello again and welcome back to our series of Wild Adventure tutorials. Today I'm going to show you our new interface, how to connect the Raspberry Pi and how to run a simple project. This is our front page. You can use either of these three services to log in and of course you can still see our service in action without creating an account. I'm going to log in using my Google account. Okay, here we go. This is our brand new interface, and as you can see, we've moved things around quite a bit. You can still see which of the boards is online on top, and then a list of the projects you have active below. Over here on the left, we have the menu. The first item is the notifications panel, where you can find messages, alerts, and warnings related to any service disruptions. Next, we have information related to your account. As you can now see, I'm working on a developer account, which expires in a couple of months. I've already added one board and three projects. When you do decide you want to upgrade from your free account, you can do so by clicking Change in the account type here. Now, the following links in the menu on the left will take you to our series of tutorials and a tour of the interface. And whenever you're done working, you can just click Log Out. We're more than happy to hear from you at any time, so feel free to contact us using the feedback link available here. If you're new to the system, the first thing you're going to need to do is add a board to your system. This will allow you to interact with it remotely and deploy programs from the cloud, read and display sensor data, and loads more. Once you have added at least one board or several, you will see a list of them, their names, statuses, and types here. For instance, now I can see that my Raspberry Pi called Idea Tower is currently online. So let's proceed to add a board. You just click Add New Board here, as, as you can see, you can currently add either a Raspberry Pi or an Intel Galileo, and we'll be supporting new boards soon. I will be adding a Raspberry Pi called Pi in this tutorial. So I just enter its name and click Next. If you're planning to use your board over a wireless connection, you just select Use Wireless here and enter the necessary information. And if you run into any problems with the connection, you can also select Pass Firewalls, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend it. I'm just going to use a wired connection now, so I'm going to deselect this and click Submit. Next, you'll have to download two files. The first is a rather large disk image that has to be written on the SD card. It may take a few minutes to download, depending on your internet speed. You can find out more about uh, writing the image on the SD card in the tutorial page you find here. The second is a very small file called wildadrin.json. This has to be copied to the SD card after you have written the image. Please make sure that it's called exactly wildadrin.json when you copy it, because otherwise it won't work. Once you've written the SD card image and copied the JSON file over, all you have to do is insert this in your Raspberry Pi, connect the Ethernet cable, and power the Raspberry Pi. After it boots up, it will show up as online in your account, just like my Raspberry Pi does here. I already have my board online, so let's just proceed to create a new project. I was thinking we should do something fun, so uh, we're going to listen to an online radio station. I'm going to call this project Radio and select the music here under Visual Programming and then hit Submit. As you can see, Radio has now been added to my list of projects. I'm going to click its name and then get to the project editing screen. Here on the left you have the same menu as earlier, only now in the form of icons. And right underneath it there's a file manager for the active project. Right now we only have one file available. And under it there's the shell for more advanced users. Below you're going to see a list of active boards, so you can use one of these for project deployment. In terms of additions to the interface, there are plenty of new visual programming blocks. One major addition is uh, this social tab here. You can use connectors to your email account, Facebook, Twitter and Twilio in order to interact with uh, these accounts. You can have access to your Facebook notifications, groups, friend lists, or even post a message to your wall. You can also do the same with Twitter. And you can use Twilio to make calls and uh, send texts. There are also plenty of new peripherals that you can interact with, such as seven segment displays, and we also support growth kits and their vast array of sensors and actuators that you can work with. You now also have a very simple way of running your own web server, which I think is really great. 
There are also new embedded devices that you can interact with, such as Spark cores and Arduinos. And if you're a Bitcoin miner, you can also check out your hash rates from CG Miner and plan your moon landing. Another major update is that now you can read and display sensor information in your dashboard. You just send the signals you want to display and then click Dashboard, drag and drop the widgets. To go back to the previous screen, you just click the name of the file you're editing. Uh, getting back to our original radio project now, if you want to see the code that is being generated in the background, just click this red button that says Show Code and you can also hide the code. Running your project is as simple as clicking the name of one of the active boards. That'll change its status from stopped to running. And now once you do, you'll see the status of the deployment. And pretty soon we're going to hear the music. There we go. Now, you can minimize a particular display and keep working on it in the background. What I've done now is I've changed the default music program a little bit so you can see the signal processing. I'm just going to deploy this. And now you're going to see um, a graph of the volume of the radio station being played on the left and the VU meter of the same signal on the right. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for taking the time to learn about our new interface.